So we're going to about to get chased by this thing. And I'm going to... Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was going to try and avoid it. But apparently Renoa counts as a hit zone as well. So let's let's introduce ourselves, shall we? Oh, he's got no, because we're only level one. Oh, level low, low level. Oh, that was it. Please hit Squall. Never mind. Oh, he did anyway. Good lad. Does he survive it? No. I don't blame him though. So there was the propagator. I think the high level he is, or the high level you are, sorry, the high level he is and the high level his magic is. So feasibly, all those spells you just saw could be higher versions of themselves later on. Let's just bear that in mind, right? I think if we go to the left here, we can skip whoever's in this room before he gets us. Red guy. And I believe there's a green guy in here. And we got to go left again. Oh no, did we just kill purple? I think we did. And then we'll go back into the other room and get the red one and then go back to the balcony and get the other red one. That's how we're playing it. Oh, again. You have to excuse me, folks. I'm a little sleepy on, on my old reflexes. Because I've spent an entire day watching films with my girlfriend. <laughs> We watched, I watched Lilo and Stitch for the first time. Never watched that film. It was surprisingly good. I enjoyed it. Uh. Then we bounced to Jingle all the way with good old Alan Schwarzenegger, which I don't think that was a very good film at the time it came out, let alone a few years later where the flying effects look horrific. <laughs> well, I do appreciate me some Arnie, so I don't mind it as much. Then we watch Back to the Future, which is a classic, and apparently my mum doesn't appreciate it. But then again, she doesn't really have the best taste in films. And then at that point, the builders that were working on the roof had finally finished banging, so my room was livable again, instead of feeling like you're in a bloody tin bath where a bunch of little dudes smashing it with sticks. The only thing that drowned them out was the glow of the Christmas tree and the loud films. It was horrible. So we came upstairs and did what we intended to do today, which was watch Return of the Jedi. Because my girlfriend doesn't remember it. So we watched some Jedi. Ba -ba -ba. Have you got something to learn? I'm going to be angry if you do. Of course you do. Too busy learning your own bloody life, even though I've never summoned you once. Something people might have realised, I don't use GFs. I never have, really. Like When you first play when you're a kid, you summon them all the time because they look really flashy. But as soon as you figure out how to junction, the GFs become almost pointless like the only thing they're good at is uh, one of the things they were really good at in Final Fantasy X which is to take a hit you don't think you can survive and even then I don't know if that works the same on this game because I don't think I've, I've done it in such a long time I know they've got a life bar but I don't know if they can tank a hit for you I, I assume they can Propagator you lose. There we go. Should make it a little bit easier. I right, give me a, a swift right hook. Look at that. She's hitting for more damage than me, thanks to the junctioning on Zell. 
which it ain't difficult really guys it ain't difficult at all because the one of the GFs that Zell has gives him a strength boost as an ability to equip and there are a ton of ways you can get significantly stronger than I am which I'm really tempted to go no I'm not because then it'll mess things up you have to do the bonus stuff before you go to Ultimacia's Palace, because if if you do, it blocks off all the towns. Which, I understand it is for plot reasons, but one of the things I hate the most about this game, and there's only a few things I do hate about it, is, is the fact that on disc 4, you essentially, to get to the end of the game and the last zone, you have to forfeit access to every other zone in the game, effectively. And I just, I've never agreed with that. This one's aggressive. Shame he's now dead. Like, that, that Renzo Kuken system there, I wish more RPGs used a similar a system of attack. Because if that was translated into standard attacks and every correct press got you an additional hit and you could combo based on skill, timing and knowledge, I think that'd be really, really cool and I think there's a lot of ways you could do that. And the only games that have really done something similar, uh, one of the big ones was Legend of Dragoon, which I really enjoyed. Because you could do it both offensively and defensively, and it was all about timing. And the timing was tricky because the interface was kind of tricky. You know, you had to play it for quite some time before you, you really got the timing down. But Lost Odyssey dabbled with it a little bit, but it didn't go deep enough. And what else did it? I can't think, but like I think there's a, a, a massive market for reaction precision action in RPGs, and it, even when it's turn-based, I think there are things you can do that put skill into the the RNG, which is what a lot of these games are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it baffles me that you know nobody's trying to innovate in that. Like much like adventure games, much like shoot 'em ups. The, the RPG genre has definitely suffered. You know, they've got simpler, they've not been as ambitious, even though the technology has, has exceeded anything they used to be. It's, it just seems really backwards. and That's why I'm super excited for, is it 15? The, the one that was versus 13 that's now become 15 that one and it's it's not because you know I've got a big hard on for a bunch of Japanese Tenshi Muyo high schoolers saving the world in modern day against giant monsters it's just that I'm a Final Fantasy fan and as much as they've poisoned the well and tried the best to persuade me not to like the series and they've done a pretty damn good job of it I still hold a special place in my heart for them to to get better you know to reclaim the past glory and for some people, they already have. Like, some people think 12 is the best. Or, there are people that think 13 is the best, which... You know, those people hurt my brain, but... You know, at least they like it. At least they've got a fantastic game, if that's what they think that is. But, in my reality, that is not the case at all. <laughs> so, I am shamelessly optimistic. And I think I always will be. Square Square Enix could really redeem themselves, what with Kingdom Hearts 3 and the acquisition, I think, of the Tomb Raider license. They've got some decent titles that they could do a lot of good with. It's just if they choose to. Because, I mean, I, I call it Rare Syndrome. I think that's the only thing I can call it these days. Uh, what I mean by Rare Syndrome, for anyone who's not quite as up on, you know, the N64 era of Rare... Rare could not do wrong. They couldn't do a single thing wrong. They were the best. You know, for me, in my eyes at that time, they were kind of like your Naughty Dogs. Where everything they touched was gold. But, because they changed management and things, and 
you know. They lost members, they become a different company, they got bought by Microsoft. Rare wasn't rare anymore. You know, the, the people who had made those, and, you know, just those amazing titles, constant, you know, brilliant titles, inspiring, you know, just encapsulating, just childhood embodied in those games. That everybody expected that level on the next generation, and they released Cameo, which was a, a GameCube game originally, which was delayed to hell, and Perfect Dark Zero, and both games. Cameo is meant to be pretty decent, Perfect Dark just isn't. But both the games that they made were really lacking, and they have essentially now become glorified avatar makers because they were in charge of designing that stuff. And they made Viva Pinata, which I hear good things about. But that's about it. Like, you know, Rara. Rara gone. They're forgotten. They're, they're just dust at this point. And it's a, it's a shame that they went from being so high to, to almost nobody recognizing the brand. And that's what a lot of game devs seem to be like nowadays. Especially from my perspective, which can be quite cynical at times. Like Capcom. Capcom's not the same company that pioneered Resident Evil, that pioneered Devil May Cry, that, that made these franchises that we love. I mean, look at the most recent ones. They're the most tired, saddest eyes, Rod Stewart-faced motherfucking games you've ever played. Because the people who made them have all left. It's sad. Square Enix is the same. You know? There's a reason why Capcom are bringing out a million versions of Street Fighter 4 because they just don't have the caliber of people designing that they used to. They can't afford to, to be making new IPs because they don't have the same caliber of people working like they used to. And you can pretty much trace the lineage of people who've left. Like Platinum, Hideki Kamiya, Guy Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry, you know, went on to to form studio with the former Clover guys who made fantastic games. He's gone, so all that genius is left with him, and a lot of the people associated with him probably joined Platinum. Then you've got, is it Inafune? The guy who did Resident Evil 1, the forefather of, of Resi, who's gone off and, and worked in various other ones. And there's, is it Shinji Mikami? I might be fucking up the names of you guys, but there's a ton of dudes that used to be. Capcom and are now elsewhere because of creative differences or bureau bureaucratic bullshit. And Capcom's brand is now not what it used to be. It used to be a seal of quality, now it's a seal of just contemplation. Is this going to be good? It was never that. And it happens a lot, and it can happen in reverse. Like Ubisoft. Ubisoft back on the N64 made shit games. They made games that got 2 out of 10 in the magazines. You know, Chameleon Twist and a bunch of other ones. Appalling platformers. They were a joke company. They were like Rebellion. Look at them now. They're on top of the world. And the thing with this is, nobody wants these companies not to succeed. We don't want them to invest all this money in building these games for them to fail and crash and burn and bankrupt them. No one wants that. Not even like the harshest troll or just nihilist doesn't want that shit. We all want things to succeed. It's just, you know, experience has taught us that it's extremely difficult for it to happen. And sometimes when they start going down these rabbit holes, they just, they can never recover. And it's the same with music. Everybody's got a band that they loved who, you know, had a, an album that pretty much changed your life. And then the next album they put out was good, but it wasn't as good as the last one. And then the one after that was so different to what you liked about the band, you no longer liked them. You know, everybody has that moment, that maturation. And I'm just praying that these companies, you know, can bring it back. Especially Square Enix. Because Square Enix were, when they merged, they were essentially the ultimate RPG you know content producer that's all they did and they did it really well they were dominant and now I just I don't know what they're doing same with Konami like what the fuck are Konami doing these days except for pro evolution soccer well 
Oh no, I was excited. And there she goes. I'm gonna steal a hug if you're not gonna give me one, you moody bastard. <laughs> this is the Ragnarok. Whoa! Is this really the Ragnarok? You're like in space, right? Uh, yeah. Genius, don't you have a scanner? Some kind of flashing light? Roger that, bro. You can track you from here. And we can go home. Ragnarok's been 17 years. I was like, eight. That's totally mind-boggling. Wanna talk about surfing? Can you please stay on, Tavik? Enter your location into the atmosphere re-entry program and you'll be okay. Once you enter the... Whoa, what is that? Once you enter the atomosphere... <laughs> atomosphere? We will guide you down. You'll be just fine. You'll be Goldilocks. Um, and how do I do that? Well, there should be a giant glowing orange thing over there next to the chairs. If you see the orange thing, feel free to press it numerous times in random variations and we will then trigger how to get home. But that's if you can break through the atomosphere. <laughs> this is no mere atmosphere. I see it. The rest is easy. Just enter the following data. 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 Go ahead. Invisible keyboard. Invisible. Entered. I'm not actually typing anything. I'm not actually typing. Entered. No errors? It's fine. Turn off the gravity generator. This should save some fuel. Use the same touch panel to turn it off. Jesus. One button to turn off gravity. Madness. Congratulations, you're home free, Ragnarok. Oh, and there's a new CD that we've got, so we'll be pumping it through the speakers shortly. It might get a little hot in that cabin, so feel free to undress. Ragnarok signing off. And the tones of Fei Wong. Eyes on me. Like that right there, I mean... <laughs> I don't think Square Enix knows how gravity works. Like, <laughs> Squall's just a bomb. I'm so tough I don't get affected by gravity. I choose my own gravity. Maybe those chairs have got some kind of... I don't know. Vacuumous property. Once you sit in them, you can command gravity. It looks like she's got a tumor on her leg. You don't like this squall? How about if I rub my crotch in your crotch? Like that? You can't be human. You can't. Like, either I know it smells bad. <clears throat> Fucks in my throat, Jesus Christ. Like a little man sat at back just boxing my tonsil. Like if a girl, she doesn't even have to be attractive here guys, no offence to unattractive ladies, sits on your lap like that, that close to you, when you're essentially a hermit like good old squally boy here, pheromones alone are going to send you funny, and that's not even mentioning scent, musk, perfume, fragrance, whatever you want to call it. Because, believe it or not, we are biologically wired to desire a partner and obviously we've realized nowadays that that partner isn't necessarily a, the opposite sex which probably made it really tough to be gay during the you know the iron age and the bronze age and what have you where if you were gay you were essentially a devil and murdered <laughs> lawfully murdered because you didn't like what you were supposed to like or what the church demanded you like
I have absolutely no idea what you just said. You should uh, get back to your own seat now. You'll be safer in your seat, goddammit. We can only hope. Oh, come on. Channel, you're in a pervert, Squall. Maybe. <laughs> Well, there was your chance, bro. This could have gone from PG to 18 real quickly if you'd have been a little bit smoother. This is Air Station Ragnarok, please respond. Oh yeah. Well, how fast is this dialogue, man? I'm not even pressing buttons, it's skipping it by itself. That's weird. So if you're wondering what Renoa was talking about, about not being together, Renoa is now technically a sorceress. And obviously sorceresses are an interesting commodity in this world. Because they can be used, they can be dangerous, there's a whole different bunch of variables. They, they kind of have the, the jab of the hut mentality on, on how they treat these potential risks. So in, instead of, you know, preemptively stopping them from being able to be used as pawns, they freeze them in a magical barrier. Which I don't think is the most successful way to... to <laughs> to stop the threat. Especially now Squall jumped literally out into space to save the, the, the woman that he, he loves. Or he thinks he loves at least, even though he couldn't even kiss the bitch. And now when we land, the man, the police, is going to try and take her away from him. I don't know what to do. This is just another crossroad in my life. But for the first time, I don't know which way to go. I've come this far because I've fallen for you. Am I just supposed to let you go? Sorceress Renoa, Heinz descendant. Yo, dog. What's up? Come with us. We must seal your power for the sake of the world. I am wearing my ceremonial robes. Notice the white. Thank you for understanding. Tell us when you are ready. I should tell you this before I go. I was possessed out in space. There was a sorceress inside me. 
goddamn rapist. It was like that old invisible man joke. Ultimicia, a sorceress from the future. She's trying to achieve time compression. She's the only one who'd be able to exist in such a world. She and no other. Hence the, she's the only one who could exist in such a world. As long as I am free, she'll continue to use me to accomplish her goal. We can't let that happen, right? How about we just kill the bitch? Then you can be free. I think that's a better plan. That way, we can, you know, we can do stuff. We'll be headed to the Sorceress Memorial. Is that it? We're just gonna... Come on, Squall. Shoot him! Don't go, Renoa. It's taking me 17 years to get past my own social anxiety problems, my personal issues, my childhood damage, and now I'm being cock blocked by a bunch of wizards. Although I'm sure they'll confiscate it before they freeze your ass. Speaking of that ass, I never got to get to know it. Oh, Squall. You silly Billy. So contrary to popular belief, if you miss the Alexander card, I believe you can get it off a of Piet at the landing zone of the escape pod. So you don't have to get Alexander in space, but I don't think the rules change. I think it's still horrible rules. 